Well, good morning, everyone. Once again, welcome back to Viking Guitar University. As always, I am your instructor, Viking Guitar. Um, today, we are going to cover how to do routing, and uh, you might not even know what routing is, but by gum, I'm going to show you. So let's open up Reaper, and as you might be able to see here, I've already recorded a couple of guitar lines. Nothing uh, super exciting. Sounds kind of like this. All right. So, um, basically what routing is, is, uh, it's the ability to send the audio or the signal from one track through a different track. So right now we've got this one labeled rhythm guitar right here, this one labeled lead guitar right here. Um, and we're going to create a third one. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this everything. We're going to capitalize it. We're going to put an exclamation point because it's that important. Now, what we're going to do is, uh, what we want is we want the audio from this file and the audio from this file, or these tracks rather, to play through this track. And for right now, don't worry about why we would want that. We're just going to focus on how to do it. And there's a few different ways to do it. Next to every track, you're going to see this I.O. button here. And basically, this controls the sends, receives, and hardware outputs for that track. Now, right now, let's, let's solo the uh, rhythm guitar track. We'll mute the other ones just for the sake of it. And let's take a look at what is here. Basically, the first thing to mention is this master parent send. This means that it's sending the audio from this track through the master fader, master bus here. Um, this is by default checked on everything because Reaper assumes that if you put a track in here or record something, you probably want it to play <laughs> when you're, um, when you're playing it. So that's always checked. Um, this controls the volume. As you can see, when I move it here, it moves over on the track there. This controls the pan and this controls the stereo width. So we're going to leave all these things width to 100, pan to center that there. Um, parent channels are how many uh, stereo channels there are, plus more channels if you want, uh, if you're doing other stuff with it. Track channels is two. We're not going to get into that right now. The thing we're really looking at here are the aud um, audio hardware outputs, sends, and receives. Now, audio hardware output is a way to send something out your speakers without sending it to the master bus. And the a reason you might want to do this is, let's say you're, you're working on a song and you want to hear how it sounds compared to another song. You could load the MP3 from that song in here, um, turn off the master parent send so it's not sending it through the meters, but then add the audio hardware output so you can still listen to it. Um, that's not what we're doing here, though. So we're going to turn that back on. The send and receives basically determines for this rhythm track right here, the one we're looking at, is it sending audio to a different track or receiving audio from a different track? And if we want to make it send audio to a different track or receive it, we just click on the list here, which will bring up a list of all of our other tracks, and we can choose where we want to send it to. Same with receive. So for this one, since we want to send it to audio track three, which is everything with the exclamation point, click the drop down list, click everything, and now it shows that it's sending audio to everything. Now we have controls about how we want to send that audio. We can choose if we want to mute that or not, if we want to inverse the phase, which is something we'll talk about later during mixing. We um, can determine if we want to send it as a stereo feed or a mono feed. And we can also choose um, how we want to send it in terms of uh, the effects and stuff. Do we want to send the sound of this track after the volume fader and after the pan fader? Do we want to send it before the fader, but after the effects have been applied, if there are any effects on here, or do we want to send it just raw without any effects? And that's kind of a cool thing, because let's say that we want to put chorus and a whole bunch of other stuff on here and make it sound super cool, but then we want to send the dry audio sound before all that stuff out to this track. We can go to pre-effects, and it'll play this track with the effects on it, but when it sends it to this track, it'll just send the dry audio. So we're going to do post fader for now, just for the sake of argument. This is the volume control of how much volume to send to it. This is the pan of what direction. And then we've got our audio tracks here and MIDI tracks. By default, audio is set to 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 2. And when we talk about 1 slash 2, that doesn't mean a half. It just means it's sending audio tracks 1 and 2, which is basically the left and right channel, the stereo mix. So if you see 1 and 2, that means it's stereo. Usually that's all we're going to have. Um, we'll get into more advanced routing stuff with multiple things like that later on. But for right now, if you just 
let's delete this guy. If we open this up in the routing and we want to send it to audio three, just click there, go down to track three, hit OK, and there we go. It's sending everything we hear from this track through this track. Now what this means is that if we're listening to this track by itself, we can still only have this track soloed and still hear it. So this is the only track that's soloed. It's not even playing these other two, but we're still hearing it because it's sending it to track three here. Now, the one thing to mention is if we mute this track, we don't get anything because now it's muting the send signal. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do we want to do that? And just bear with me. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to send this track through it also. And we could do it the same way. We could open up the IO on this track. We could add the send here, but there's two other ways we could do it. One would be to open up the three track here, and we see that it's receiving from track one because we already set that up, and we can just add a receive here so it receives from track two. And now the complementary portion on track two will show that it's sending to track three. Basically, it all just links up. It's that simple. Um, we could do it that way. Or the super easy way is we can delete all of this so there's no routing going on. We can click this I.O. button and drag it over to here and then click this one and drag it over to here. And it's basically like plugging a cable from this one into this one. Now, when we look at it, it's still receiving from the rhythm guitar and the lead guitar. And once again, with this track being soloed, these aren't even playing. So if I mute that, we're just, we're hearing both of these files, even though neither of these files is actually playing. Now, if I unsolo it and we listen to all three, it plays them all a bit louder because it's firing through these two tracks as well as this one. Okay, so now that we know how to route, why do we want to route? And the the main thing that you're probably going to be using this for is effects routing. Now, if you remember in our effects video, I talked about how when you start using effects, um, especially a lot of them, one of the things that comes up is memory management and how you want to be economical with how many instances of each effect you have running. And I showed you how to double click and add a folder track and kind of make that a folder track and then put the effects on there instead of through here. But there, there are kind of some problems with that. Um, the reason we, you, you want to do this as a folder track is because you can simplify things in terms of effects. That way, if you want to put chorus on all of these things, you can just go down to your chorus and the link for these effects is probably showing on the screen right now and is also in the video description but you can click on Chorus, add it to the folder track, and now it'll play on both of these files. And for the time being, we're just gonna delete this everything one to show a point. So we've got our folder track, and the folder track contains our two guitar tracks, and we've put Chorus on the folder track, so. And without it, it sounds like. And we can do that with a delay too. And we're going to specifically use a delay to prove a point. So we're going to add our delay. We're going to turn the mix down a bit. And now it sounds like this. So basically both of those are being echoed. They're being run through this parent track and uh, we can, you know, control that that way. But Here's the downside to doing it this way. Let's say that we want a different amount of delay on each of these tracks. Now, if we put the delay on the folder track here, it's there's no way to control it independently for the two of these because this track is receiving audio from both of these. Um, we could change it so there's less delay, but it'll be less delay for both tracks. So if we want like a small amount of delay on the rhythm guitar, but a lot of delay on the lead, there's no way to do this with a, a folder track. And the only other option up to this point would be to not have it there, put two different delays on, one on each track, and then adjust it. So this one has the bigger delay, this one has the smaller delay. But then we're back in the same boat of using two instances of an effect when really we might just, you know, there, there's gotta be a way to use one instance. And there is. What we're going to do is we're going to change this. We're going to delete this folder track. So once again, we just have these two. We're going to create our new track. We're going to call it everything again. And we're going to route both of these to this track. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to solo this one. And we're going to add the delay to this effect or to this track. So we're going in, we're adding our delay. Now, when we listen to it with just this track soloed, we're going to hear these two tracks and the delay on this track, which sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and we're going to change the mix to 100%. So basically now on this track we're hearing none of the dry sound, but this sound is being routed through this track and powering this delay and all we're hearing is the echo. So now it sounds like this. Which is just the echo portion, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the volume a bit and we're going to unsolo it so now we're hearing all of them. So without the echo it's... And then when we add our track with the echo it's... You see that? Now, this is what gives us super awesome control over this because what we have here is we've got a track that's just doing delay, that's receiving audio from these two. But what we can do is we can determine the amount of volume send from each of these two top tracks to here. So if we want just a small amount of the rhythm guitar to come through, but more of the lead guitar, we just adjust the volume sliders accordingly, and it sounds like this. And conversely, we could make it so that there's very little of the lead coming through, but a lot of the rhythm. And since we're still playing these source tracks, we're hearing the full dry sound, it's just powering this delay and we can control how much. So you can hear the rhythm guitar is really delaying, but the lead isn't. Another cool thing we can do with this, if you remember our envelope video, I talked about how you can do envelopes for pretty much anything. Well, that includes audio sends and receives. So let's say, let's, let's get rid of this rhythm guitar track for now, or let's just turn it off. We don't want to erase it yet. And uh, with this track here, we're going to turn it up and turn our volume back to zero for the send from the lead. So it sounds like this. Now, this note right here, this. That's a really kind of high, bright, cool note. So let's say we wanted to do something super fun where the, the amount of send from this track is a certain amount, but then with that note it sends it higher so we get more delay on that note. But that note carries through with the delay. All we want to do is we want to go to the track here, go to our envelope automation thing, and you'll see we have envelopes for the send volume pan and mute to the everything track. So we're going to open the volume here. And now we've got our envelope. And for this track, uh, let's say we're going to turn down the whole thing a little bit. In this track, we're going to add our anchor point and then make it so this has a lot more delay just for that note. But then right when it gets to the next note, it drops back down to whatever it was, 2.82. And for that, I just right click on the point, enter the notes I want. So now what's going to happen is it's going to be sending volume from this track at negative 2.82 decibels to this one, but then for this note it's going to send an extra basically 5 decibels and then drop back to zero, so it sounds like this. And let's make this really augmented so we can hear what it's doing. You hear how that note just really rings out more? Let's even turn it down so it's not sending anything and then just sending that note. You hear how that one carries through? We'll turn, uh, we'll turn this feedback up a bit more just so we can kind of hear what it's doing and turn that up once again. Hear that note ringing out? And remember before how I said the reason we don't, uh, in the envelope video and the effects video, I talked about how we could try to do that by just putting the effect on the, the source track here and then doing an envelope with the mix. But the problem with that is, is that once the mix envelope comes back down, we could do it, we could do it this way. You know, just to roughly do it like that. But the problem is, is then it won't carry through. The mix is being turned back down here, and any echo gets turned back down with it. So it sounds like this. All it does is echo in this period, but doesn't carry over. 
That's if we do it with an onboard effect here on the source track and then adjust the mixer envelopes. But let's bypass this guy and we'll turn that effect off. If we do it with a new track with the delay on it and then just control how much we send to that delay, it still carries through. All right, pretty cool, huh? So that's enough of how to do basic routing. Um, there's a lot more you can do with it, but a lot of it comes down to just kind of playing around with it. There is one specific thing that we are not going to talk about too much in this video called sidechain compression and uh, sidechaining routing. Uh, we're going to get into that more when we're doing our tutorials on mixing, because right now it would just be confusing and uh, not really something we need to talk about. But what we are going to talk about is uh, if we have a virtual instrument here, how to route that to different tracks. So let's say we create a new instrument here and we're going to call this drums with a couple of Z's because it's cool that way. And we're going to go down and we're going to load a drum instrument on here. And I'm going to use Easy Drummer because that's something I use a lot. And we're going to wait for Easy Drummer to load. Now, in the meantime, we want to think about what drums are. Drums are a kick track and then snares and hi-hats and toms and all that stuff. And let's say we've got all that on this track here. And let's say we, uh, we go in and we, we add a new line and we open it and we load our note names to make things easy for us. And these will be available for download also. And then let's say we create this, this drum track and we're going to make it really simple where we have kick, snare, kick, snare, and then a little tom roll at the end, uh, just like, doo -doo -doo. there we go. And let's say a crash at the start, and then hats. And we're not going to deal with the, uh, the velocity or anything here, how to change all that stuff or make this sound more human. That's something that uh, we covered in the MIDI tutorial, and you can watch it there. But this drum pattern sounds like this. All right, piece of cake. And let's have it cycle twice just for the sake of it. Now, this is all fine and good, and this is, you know, super cool, and we got our drums, and that's awesome. But let's say we want to change something about one part of the drums. Like, let's say we want to have the snare have a delay on it. Now, we could open up the track here, and on top of our Easy Drummer thing, we could add a delay. But that delay is going to be reading everything here. It's going to be delaying and, at, or not delaying, but echoing the whole the whole thing. And here we'll set it to like 3.8 or something just to make it more obvious here. You see? Now, if we're doing that, that's fine. If we just want all the drums to echo, that's great. But what if we want just the snare drum to echo or just the hi-hat? Or let's say that we want to apply um, compression or EQ just to one of the instruments. We can't very well do it this way. Now, one way to do this would be to isolate that instrument in here to mute all the other notes and just render it to a new sound file. So let's say we want to just work with the kick track. We could select everything else. We could mute those notes by going here and clicking mute. We could select all these other ones, go to mute, and now when we listen to it, it's just on this part, and then we could render that to an audio file. We'll delete this guy for the time being. And now we have just a basic audio file of our kick. And then we could do whatever effects we want to it. But that takes time, and then it, it takes a long time, we've got to isolate all those notes, and then let's say we're, we do that, and then we decide we want to change something. Then we have to go back in here, re-render it and all that stuff, and it's just a, it's a mess. So we're going to control Z, undo all that stuff, unmute all of our tracks, we're going to go in here, we're going to take our delay off it. So wouldn't it be nice if we could use routing to send the audio just from the kick to a separate track here? And by gum, we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our instrument here. And first off, your instrument needs to be able to handle multi-channel routing before you can do this. If it just sends it on one audio thing and you're stuck with that, then that's what you're stuck with. But Easy Drummer here is one that doesn't stick you with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the mixer. And if we take a look here, we've got controls for a whole bunch of different virtual microphones in here. This 
Over here is a microphone that's set on the kick drum. These are two microphones set on the snares, a mic on the hi-hat, mics on the individual toms, an overhead mic, and a room mic. And we have the ability to adjust um, you know, the, the fader and the panning for each one of those. Uh, now what we can do here too is this: we have this output thing and everything is set to track one. Now we're going to change that. And the way we're going to change it is we're going to think about how we want to be able to control this. So we've got one mic for the kick. We probably want to send that just one place. We've got two different mics on the snare, but let's send both of those to the same place. A different place than the kick, but the same place, because we want to be able to control the snare altogether. We don't want to have to do individual mixing or effects on both snare mics. So both of those go to track two. The hi-hat will set to track three, because we want that a different place than the snare and the kick. For the toms, we'll send each one to track four. And mind you, these tracks don't exist yet. We're just setting it up on the front end here because we want to, so for, we send all these to track four because we want to be able to control all the toms together. We'll send the overhead to track five and the room to track six. So at this point now, we've got it set up so Easy Drummer here is sending the kick signal one place, both uh, snare signals another, the hat a third place, all the toms a fourth place, the overhead a fifth place, and the room a sixth. So now we can close out the routing and close this out. Now what we want to do is, uh, we'll just minimize this for the time being, we want to create enough tracks here in Reaper so we can actually, um, we can control those individual receives. So we're going to create one track, we're going to label it kick, we're going to create another, label it snare, a third, label it hat, fourth, label it toms, fifth, label it uh, overhead, and track sixth one here is room. Now at this point, these tracks are nothing but empty labeled tracks. They, they don't know to look at Easy Drum or anything like that, but what we're going to do is we're going to click this I.O. button and we're going to route it to the kick, we're going to route it to the snare, and just drag and drop route it to each of these other tracks. Now what's happening is each one of these tracks is receiving everything from Easy Drummer. We'll erase that guy, we'll move over here. Even though the notes are being played up here, it's just sending it to these tracks. Now, since these ones are only sent to receive certain audio from here, right now it's just playing the kick drum. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the master routing for this, the, uh, the Easy Drummer track. Now, remember when I said 1, 2 just means that it's a stereo signal? For all of these things here, we need to think about it in terms of twos, because each one of these sends, even though this says in the mixer track 1, it's really sending two tracks, because it's sending the left and right signal for this. For this, it's sending the left and right signal for track two on both of these, the left and right signal for track three. So when we open up the routing again, we want to think about this. To the track, it's sending one and two, which is the stereo signal for track one. For the snare, we want the stereo signal for track two, which is going to be, click this drop down menu, go to new channels on sending track, stereo source, and it's going to be three, four. Now, what we need to do too here on track channels for Easy drummers go up and send it to 12 because we want to be able to send up to 12 tracks, which is a left and right stereo track for each of our six individual tracks here. So kick is 1, 2, snare is 3, 4, hat is going to be 5, 6, and so on and so forth. Toms are going to be 7 and 8, overhead is going to be 9 and 10, and room is going to be 11 and 12. Now what we've got is we've got it so each individual instrument, the kick, left and right channels go here, both snare mics left and right channels go here, the hat left and right goes here, all three toms left and right channels go there, the overhead left and right goes here, and the room left and right goes here. So if we just solo this kick track and listen to it, it sounds like this. If we snare uh, solo the snare, uh, let's do the hats, it sounds like this the toms, and so forth. Now the last thing we want to do here is we want to go back to the I.O., um, the routing for the drums here, and turn off the master parent send. Because what's going on at this point is for each instrument, we're actually hearing it twice. We're hearing it through the parent track here and as it sends it through here. Now, if that's what you want, that's fine. But the problem is, is let's say we EQ the kick here because we want to, you know, roll off some of the low end on the kick. That's not going to make whole, a whole lot of difference if we're still hearing the full un-EQ'd kick from up here. 
So we go here, we turn off the master parent send, so all this track is doing is it's not sending anything to the master bus here, it's just sending it to these individual tracks, and then these individual tracks will send to the master. So we still have the full drum kit. But now let's say we want to add that, uh, that echo to the snare that we talked about. We'll just go down to the snare track, click the FX, add the delay, and now when we solo the snare track, hear how it does that? We're getting the echo on it, but then when we listen to the full drum track, we're not getting echo on everything else, we're just getting echo on the snare. Now, we're just using echo as, as a way to do something, or uh, let's do some reverb just to kind of really make it obvious. But I want you to think about what this actually means in terms of what you're able to do. This means that you can have isolated effects on each one of these. You can mix it separately, you can tell it to do stuff separately, and it it could be done independent of the other instruments, which is an incredibly powerful tool. When we get into how to do mixing and stuff, you're going to see just how important it is to be able to have um, instrument-specific mixing being done, and this is the way to do it. Now let's listen to it just with the, the reverb on the snare here. You hear that? We can even turn it up and make it super intense and cavernous and stuff. Isn't that awesome? So I've shown you how to do it manually because I think it's important that you recognize how to do it. Um, you need to understand not just that this works, but why it works and how it works, because there are a lot of times you're going to get into a situation where you need to be able to do this for yourself. And now that I've shown you how to do it that way, we're going to delete all this. Ah, windows that I don't want. We're going to delete all of it. And now I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. Reaper has the ability to build almost all of this stuff for you automatically. And for this, you just right click, go to insert virtual instrument on new track, pick the instrument you want, like our drum kit uh, sampler here, hit OK. It'll ask if you want to add the following tracks, click yes. And basically what it'll do is it'll, op it'll build this track with the instrument on it, it'll automatically mute the master parent send, and it'll build all this routing for you. So all you need to do is go into the actual effect, go to the mixer, and tell it which tracks go where. You don't have to worry about any of the routing stuff that way. But I don't like showing you the, uh, the, the easy way to do it until I've shown you how it actually works. So that is our tutorial on routing with Viking Guitar University. As always, thank you for watching and attending. If you like this video, be sure to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave comments, tell me stuff you want to learn about, and uh, give me some feedback on this, because uh, this is for you guys. Until next time, uh, be sure to keep practicing. Just record all the time. That's the only way you're going to get better at it, is just dumb repetition over and over. And uh, the other thing you need to do, as I always say, is keep the world metal.